Quantitative PCR or qPCR, what is it? How does it work and why is it useful? Quantitative PCR, qPCR is a technology which simultaneously amplifies and measures DNA. It is sometimes referred to as real-time PCR or even quantitative real-time PCR. In Swedish we say that a beloved child has many names and that certainly seems to be the case here. In a nutshell, qPCR works exactly the same as normal PCR, except it adds two additional elements. These are a fluorescent dye, i.e. something that can be tracked, and a fluorometer, i.e. a tracker. These two additional elements allows us to measure the DNA uh, that we are amplifying as it is being amplified. To better understand this whole process, let us first take a look at how conventional PCR works. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, can be thought of as a DNA copy machine. PCR is in other words a technique to copy or amplify small segments of DNA. It is both relatively cheap as well as fast. It is also useful since several instances of genetic and molecular analysis require significant amounts of sample DNA. To better visualize the different ingredients of PCR, we can think of it in terms of building a house. The first thing we need is the DNA template to be copied, i.e. the DNA we want to amplify. This would be the blueprint of the house. Second, we need DNA nucleotide bases or DNTPs. These A, G, Cs and T bases are the building blocks of DNA after all. It naturally follows then that these nucleotides are the construction material from which we can build our house. Third, we need an enzyme known as TAC polymerase enzyme, which adds these nucleotides according to complementary base pairing of the DNA template. In other words, the TAC polymerase is our builder, which builds our house. Fourth, we need primers. These are short stretches of DNA that the TAC polymerase enzyme or the builder can attach to, in other words, upon which the builder can start building our house. So in this house example, these primers act as a foundation upon which the house can be built. Fifth and finally, we need a buffer to ensure that the right external conditions for the reaction is met. This can be thought of as nice weather, making the building process easier. Putting it all together, we have a builder, TAC polymerase, that starts building a house, new copied DNA sequence, upon the foundation, DNA primer. This builder assembles the building material, DNA nucleotides, according to our blueprint DNA template, while the weather is nice, buffer. Hopefully that helps you to get a more clear picture of what's going on and to more easily remember all of the different ingredients in PCR. Now, let us take a look at how this entire process actually occurs or takes place inside the PCR reaction. But please, before that, if you're finding this video useful so far, give it a quick like to help me help more people. Thank you. So, the polymerase chain reaction can be divided into three main phases. First, we have denaturing. This takes place at 94 to 95 degrees Celsius, which breaks the hydrogen bond, forcing the double-stranded DNA to separate into two pieces of single-stranded DNA. Second, we have the annealing stage, occurring at 50 to 64 degrees Celsius, where the primers can attach to their specific location, and from which the TAC polymerase can start synthesizing or building two new strands of DNA, one for each DNA strand. Third, the extending stage at 72 degrees Celsius, during which the TAC DNA polymerase synthesizes DNA, turning the two original pieces of single-stranded DNA into two pieces of double-stranded DNA. These double-stranded DNA molecules contain one strand of old template DNA and one strand of new synthesized DNA. During this process, the TAC polymerase adds complementary bases to the DNA template one by one, A to T, and vice versa, and C to G, and vice versa. This results in the DNA doubling for each completed PCR process. These three processes of thermal cycling 
as it is called, is repeated 20 to 40 times, resulting in a huge number of copies of the original DNA sequence in a relatively short time. This is because the process is exponential, since it doubles after every reaction. Now, how is qPCR different from normal PCR? Well, as I alluded to earlier, the main difference lies in the fact that qPCR allows us to measure the PCR reaction while it is still occurring. This turns the process from a qualitative process into a quantitative one, meaning that we get real-time data that corresponds to the amount of amplified DNA as it is still ongoing. qPCR follows the exact same working principle as normal PCR, but it marks the nucleotides used in DNA synthesis with fluorescent labels. This is what allows us to measure the increase in DNA as it is being amplified, because when these marked uh, DNTPs are incorporated into the DNA strand, they release their label, which then releases a signal, which we can measure. So that's why this process becomes quantitative, because we can measure this released signal of fluorescent labels. Well then, how is qPCR currently used? Quantitative PCR is currently used to detect identify and quantify microorganisms that cause diseases such as bacteria, viruses and fungi. The lab tests for COVID-19 were usually carried out by PCR and qPCR for instance. It can also be used to detect and quantify genetically modified organisms. In addition, PCR in general is often used in forensic research to amplify pieces of DNA found at a crime scene to allow us to identify the culprit. These are just a few of the many uses of qPCR. Now, there you have it. If you know someone else who needs to learn the fundamentals of qPCR, please send this video their way and help me learn more people about biotech stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much. Otherwise, I am allowing the almighty YouTube algorithm to decide what video would be best suited for your particular need. Please consider checking that out if it seems interesting. You can click it on the screen right now. With that, until next time guys. Thank you for watching.